This is the best Grand Seiko mechanical movement ever created. And I know that is kind of a clickbait type of statement, but this is not my opinion. I'm quoting from Grand Seiko. I'm quoting from their website. And the watch fan in me, I think it is awesome that they are proudly stating uh, just what a great caliber they have crafted. They have designed and then executed. This is the 9S A5 High Beat True In-House Movement that is found within this SLGH-013. The SLGH-013 is part of the Heritage Collection of Grand Seiko. It is a pretty recent release, and in this video, I will talk about what makes this model strong. I will focus heavily in on the movement because I think the movement is one of the biggest strengths of this watch. But I'll also talk about the drawbacks or the weaknesses, if there are any, uh, within this watch and caliber. Now, that being said, I'd like to shout out to Exquisite Timepieces before I jump into those details. They are a family-owned brick-and-mortar authorized dealer for Grand Seiko and other brands. I've worked with them for years in creating content. I've bought multiple watches for myself from them. Great authorized dealer. A link will be in the description of this video. Now, this SLGH-013 will be one of the few Grand Seiko models to be fully crafted out of the ever brilliant steel formula that they have developed. Now, it's not just found in the case, it's also found on the case back, the bezel, the crown, and then also this bracelet and clasp. Ever brilliant steel is harder, brighter, wider, or more desaturated, and also more corrosive resistant than other formulas of stainless steel that Grand Seiko and Seiko have used in the past. This also has the 44 GS case design that originally debuted back over 60 years ago in the late 1960s. I think it almost has a gem-like quality to it. So I love the 44 GS case. This is my personal favorite case shape that Grand Seiko makes. And I just really enjoy the fact that they're using an old design. It's a little bit different from that original 44 GS case from 1967 but you can definitely see the evolution, and I think that's a strong thing. I like the Suratsu polishing found throughout. I do think this watch is very comfortable on wrist. It looks proportional. It's thin. And that was the knock on a lot of prior Grand Seiko releases. They just felt a little bit too tall on wrist, and that took a little bit from the feel, the enjoyment, the refinement while the watch is on wrist. And this does not suffer from that. And part of the reason is the fact that this new in-house movement is about a millimeter thinner than uh, previous high beat mechanical calibers that Grand Seiko has released. So let's talk about this movement. This again is the 9S A5 high beat in-house movement that carries something that frankly, I am a little taken back that Grand Seiko has not marketed more and has not uh, talked about to a higher degree, this carries a new escapement. Now, with other movements, most movements use the same type of escapement technology, save for Omega, which famously and marketedly uses the tri-level coaxial escapement style, but Grand Seiko has developed their own escapement that is supposed to have just a cleaner and more efficient transfer of energy I think that's a positive thing. I think that is a feat of engineering, and Grand Seiko calls it the dual impulse escapement. Outside of that, you will also find twin barrels for housing the 80 hours of power reserve, which I find very impressive for a watch that is a true high beat. So this beats 10 times every second, or 36,000 times every hour that is a lot of energy so the fact that we can get 80 hours within this caliber housed in twin barrels is a good thing and the other positive thing about twin barrel architecture is there is a more consistent release of energy between the two barrels that's a good thing the caliber will also have a high joule count of 47 joules Again, a true high beat, 36,000 beats every hour. This will also have an acceptable daily deviation rate of plus five to minus three seconds per day, which you might find just a little bit tidier than COSC levels of accuracy. But I have found in my experience with two of these 9SA5 calibers, 
and multiple other calibers from Seiko and Grand Seiko. This brand likes to under-promise and then over-deliver. So the caliber will be adjusted in six different positions done in hand. This is a hand-assembled movement that is crafted in the Shizu Kuishi studio in Japan. And uh, please forgive me if I totally butcher the pronunciation of some of these words. But you take a look at this movement. And not only is it technically impressive and thinner, but it's just beautiful. Grand Seiko, I think, has stepped up their level of traditional finish when it comes to the striping and the unglage and the black polishing, the skeletonized rotor. This is a work of art. And then these little improvements from the tech specs to the finish just adds for a more satisfying experience as a watch collector down to the little details of MEMS technology and the component creation. So these small components are skeletonized, they're lighter, and they're more efficient. So really, this is a work of art that I find so impressive. And I love the fact that I'm able to view it through the reverse of this watch. But let's flip the watch over and take a look at the dial. This is a light blue texturized dial that Grand Seiko says is meant to remind you of the texture of snow starting to melt in spring on the slopes of Mount Iwate, which can be viewed from the Shizu Kuishi studio where all mechanical Grand Seiko movements are created. So I don't know if that's necessarily true. I just think this is a beautiful, intricate dial and Grand Seiko is well known for doing beautiful, intricate, texturized dials with a high level of execution and color play. Uh, this does not disappoint in the slightest. And I like the fact that we have polished beveled hands, polished beveled markers, uh, and I don't see any imperfections in the polish. The detail work, again, is incredible. I like the blued seconds hand that is thermally blued. I love this 44 GS case. I love the Suratsu polishing. I love the proportions on wrist. I love the 100 meters of water resistance with a signed thread down crown done in the ever brilliant steel. I think this is just a very strong piece and hopefully I'm not being too biased here in this presentation. There is a lot to enjoy, but at the same time, this is a very pricey watch coming in at a retail price of $9,500. And I know some of you can't fathom spending nearly $10,000 on a watch that does not say Rolex or Omega or a different well-known uh, Swiss luxury brand or German luxury brand. But I think the longer that Grand Seiko continues to produce absolute pieces of mechanical art that are so strong in every aspect and so enjoyable to wear on wrist, there will be a day where we go, wow, that only costs $9,500. It should cost a lot more than that. I think you have to see Grand Seiko in person to really appreciate the beauty, the brilliance, the depth, and the detail work. Uh, hopefully, I'm doing an adequate job of trying to convey that here in this video. But let's talk about weaknesses, if any, on this watch, on this SLGH-013. I think they are all personal preference. They are entirely subjective uh, because I don't think there are any weaknesses in the alloy, the fit, the thinness, the wearability, the detail work, the movement, the accuracy, all of that stuff, I think, again, is very strong. But for myself, I would lose the extra dial text found on the southern portion of the dial. I think it is a little bit redundant and unnecessary, and I don't want my eye to be drawn to that black text. I want to look at the soft, frosty blue texture of the dial and the beautiful polishing on these appliques and Dauphine style hands and the thermally blued seconds hand. I want to look at the details and I want to look at it uh, just, just to appreciate the art level here and the craftsmanship. And I don't care to see specs printed out on the dial, but you might disagree with me. You might disagree with me vehemently, but again, it's personal preference. I would lose uh, I would lose that text there. The other thing is Grand Seiko is not known for doing great bracelets or great clasps. They're finished very well. Again, this is done in the new Ever Brilliant Steel. They are adjustable, they are comfortable, but they have more flex and play when you compare it to a Swiss luxury brand or a German luxury brand. And so if you are new to Grand Seiko, you just have to understand this is a different feel 
You buy Grand Seiko or you buy Seiko for the casework, for the original designs, for the lovely dial work and movements and satisfaction on wrist. You don't necessarily buy Seiko or Grand Seiko for how solid the bracelets feel. So uh, I just want to mention that if you are familiar with Grand Seiko, you know exactly what I'm talking about and it's likely not an issue for you. So that being said, please let me know if I missed anything in this presentation. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer those questions in the comments section of this video. And again, if you're shopping for Grand Seiko, I'm going to leave a link to exquisite timepieces here in the description. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you next time.